Okay, I'm terrified, but please tell me what they're about. I'm literally shaking in my white box. What, what do you got? Well, I also have an Arizona iced tea. Oh, is this instead of cider we get uh, we get Skittles tonight? Well, this is Arizona iced tea, Skittles, and a hoodie. What does that make you? Uh, Trayvon Martin? Yes. You good? Okay. I'll keep it in mind. I'm, I'm glad you're not injured. I was afraid you had no, some, no, no, no. some head wounds. I didn't have time to go home. I saw your wife. Take care, Sam. Uh, wait. All righty. Oh, suggestion. I was going to make this what came up here. As, uh, if you could adjust the date, you should be probably as proud as possible. How are you doing, sir? Might be out. Come back in. There's one over there. Your neck turns, though. Right, 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 right. Well, we'll see you next time. I never mind getting a couple of showers of sleep. <laughs> feeling especially white today. Not just the outfit, but the outfit reinforces my my, in, my internal whiteness. Yeah. <laughs> the Japanese person. Come on, Jen. Come in. This is the wrong chair. Sorry. Mic's on. Mic's on. Hello. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order for tonight, Monday, uh, June the 4th, 2018. And certainly want to welcome all of you all who are in attendance. Could you please now join me for a moment of silent meditation? Thank you. I would now like to recognize Councilmember Reese to lead us in the pledge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. If it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please join me um, in rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you very much. And now, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Shule? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? Here. Councilmember Alston? Here. Councilmember Caballero? Here. Councilmember Freeman? Present. Councilmember Middleton? Here. Councilmember Reese? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, we have no ceremonial items tonight, so I'm going to move directly to announcements by the council. Are there any announcements by members of the council? Councilmember Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to take just a minute or two tonight uh, to thank you um, for recently signing a letter along se alongside 75 other mayors from across the country in support of the federal Title X program. Title X is our country's a federal program uh, that funds affordable birth control and reproductive health care. But last month, uh, the federal government proposed a new rule that would prevent doctors from providing their patients with full and accurate information about their reproductive health care options, including abortion. Currently, Title X requires health care providers to provide that full and accurate information to their patients, and the federal gag rule that's been proposed would do just the opposite. Title X is a vital federal program that helps millions of Americans by funding health centers that provide cancer screenings, birth control, sexually transmitted infection screenings, pregnancy testing, and annual exams. Right here in Durham, uh, just one provider of those services, Planned Parenthood South Atlantic, uh, provided preventive health care to 2,227 patients 
just last year, and that's just one provider. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, I was proud to see that you joined 75 of America's mayors, who in total represent over 32 million Americans in opposing the federal gag rule. And y'all are in really good company. Uh, more than 200 members of Congress have come out in opposition to the gag rule, including Durham's two members of the U.S. House of Representatives, Representative David Price and Representative G.K. Butterfield. And over 100 public health organizations are also opposing uh, this, including the American Medical Association, the American College of Physicians, and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. So uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for adding your voice to the chorus of those who believe, as I do, that every American is entitled to accurate and complete information about their health care, including information about safe legal abortion. And let's hope that the policymakers in Washington, D.C., uh, listen to that chorus and turn away from this uh, dangerous federal gag rule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Council Member Reese. Thank you for drawing the letter to my attention, and uh, I was glad to be able to sign it, so thank you. Uh, um, Council Member Caballero. Yes, just really quickly, I, I will not be pulling. Um, I know there have been some folks who wanted to potentially comment on number two of the consent agenda, and so if we pull that, then we will. you will not be able to do a comment until the very end of the evening. So I see everyone who's here in support and I just want to say thank you. And if you are here in support, everyone who's here is wearing white. If you could please stand so we can all acknowledge you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, quiero decir que no vamos a hablar de la declaración misma esta noche, pero les quería decir que estamos con ustedes, que les apoyamos, que apoyamos a todos los inmigrantes especialmente Samuel y José Chicas, y esta declaración es por ellos. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member. Any further announcements? All right, and now our next order of business uh, is our, our, our priority items, and I'll recognize the city manager for any priority items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone, members of council. Uh, this evening, uh, priority item uh, I have for the council item number 19, which is the contract for software solution to automate the City of Durham Employee Performance Evaluation Program. Would like to request that that uh, be referred back uh, to the administration to be brought back the, uh, the next council meeting. And then uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank and congratulate uh, the Durham Police Department, the Durham Fire Department, Keep Durham Beautiful, many other city departments and many, many community partners who spent this past Saturday uh, for a community cleanup day and community relationship building day at McDougal Terrace. It was a tremendous, tremendous uh, outpouring of work and support by a lot of city employees, a lot of city partners, but also a lot of the McDougal Terrace community who uh, who came out in very large numbers to uh, celebrate their community, clean up their community, and, uh, and look to establish more meaningful relationships with the, uh, the city. See Anthony Scott with Durham Housing Authority. I know he was there. There's a lot of housing authority representatives as well, but it was a great day. Uh, I'm not sure all of which members of council attended. I saw the mayor there, so thank you and thank anyone who came, but really want to congratulate and thank in particular Keep Durham Beautiful and the, uh, the city police and fire departments for really Great turnout and a great morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager. It was a wonderful, wonderful event. Uh, you all have heard the city manager's priority item. Can I hear a motion on his item? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded the manager's priority item, which is to uh, refer item 19 back to the city administration. Any discussion? If not, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. <coughs> Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Attorney, any priority items tonight? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, no priority items. Madam Clerk? No items, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. Uh, we're now going to proceed to the next item on the agenda, which is the <coughs> consent agenda. Uh, all items on the consent agenda must be approved in one vote unless an item is removed by, from the consent agenda by any member of the council or by any member of the public. Uh, if, if, if a member is removed, it will be uh, considered, uh, as Council Member Caballero said, uh, at the end of the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, and so I'm going to, let's see. So 
Okay. Um, just looking at our speaker requests here. I'm going to read the consent agenda items. Item one, dependent eligibility verification performance audit for April 2018. <coughs> item two, resolution in support of the National Movement of Congregations of Faith. For item two, uh, I have two speakers, uh, Lee Mortimer and Chris Tiffany. Uh, and we uh, can pull those, that item, but we won't be taking them up until the end of the meeting. I just want to make that clear. Uh, so we'll be pulling item two. Um, item three, appointment of civilian police review board members, and this has also been pulled by Chris Tiffany. Uh, item four, contract amendment with a housing authority of the city of Durham, DHA, for affordable housing development activities. Item five, supplemental agreement for U4726 HM Avondale Road sidewalk project. Item six, U5745 roundabout at NC751 and University Drive municipal agreement. <clears throat> Item seven, downtown Durham transportation study contract with Alta Planning and Design, Inc. Item eight, interlocal agreement for Triangle Regional Call Center. Item nine, construction manager at risk pre-qualification process for the Department of Water Management facility complex and compliance services building. Item 10, contract with Ralph Hodge Construction Company for the 2018 manhole, manhole re rehabilitation project, rehabilitation program. Um, <clears throat> item 11, contract with in, in situ Forum Technologies LLC for the 2018 sewer lining program, North. Item 12, contract with Amliner East Inc. for the 2018 sewer liner program, South. Item 13, bid report for April 2018. Item 14, proposed sale of property located at 700 Canal Street to Copernica Properties, LLC. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull that one. Okay, we'll pull item 14. Item 15, cell tower lease and license agreement with Celco Partnership, DBA Verizon, 801 Ellis Road. Item 17, contract with Trademark Properties to provide commercial real estate leasing, property management services for the new mixed-use parking garage. Uh, item 19 has been referred back to the city manager's office for further consideration. Item 21, fiscal year 2018-19 amendment to contract for city services and programs. Mr. Mayor, I want to pull that one. Item 21? Yes. For the downtown municipal service district. Item 22, fiscal year 2018-19 contract to fund economic development programs and services operated by downtown Durham, Inc. using city of Durham grant funds. Item 23, Second Amendment to Economic and Community Development Agreement between Austin Lawrence Partners East LLC and the City of Durham. Item 24, Contract with North Carolina Polygraphic Inc. to conduct pre-employment polygraph examinations of police applicants. Item 25, Contract for Janitorial Services for Public Works Operations Centers, PWOC. Item 26, Kimberly Horn & Associates City, Duke University Permitting and Design Services Triangle Fiber Project. Item 27, City, Duke University Fiber Optic Network Partnership. Item 29 can be found on the general business agenda under public hearings. Uh, the items that have been pulled are items 2, item 3, item 14, and item 21. Uh, with the exception of those items, do I hear a motion that we approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. second. Moved and second. We approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. We will take those items up subsequent to our other business. We'll now move to the general business agenda, public hearings. We have one item today under public hearings. This is item 29, the public hearing of the proposed FY 2018-19 budget and FY 19 to 24 capital improvement plan or the CIP. And uh, we will now hear our report from staff. Good evening, Mayor and members of council. Bertha Johnson, Director of Budget and Management Services. This is a public hearing to receive public comments on the proposed 2018-19 budget and 2019-24 Capital Improvement Plan. This item is required by North Carolina General Statute 159-12, and the item has been advertised in the local newspaper as required. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Laverne. Uh, you have now 
We've now heard the staff report, and I'm going to declare this public hearing open. And first, I'm going to ask if there are any questions by members of the council for staff at this point. If not, we will hear from members of the public. Uh, we have we have seven uh, speakers who have signed up, and as I call your name, if you'll proceed over here to my right and uh, line up here uh, on this side of the of the room, and uh, everyone will have three minutes to make their comments. And so, first, we'll hear from Catherine Malloy. Um, next is Denise Hester. Third is Larry Hester. Diane Standard. Max Davis. Sarah Vukalic. I hope I have your name right. And Landis Masnor. Masnor. Say again? Close enough. Masonor, I see you tried to help me by putting the long mark over the A, and I still messed it up. <laughs> so, Mr. Masonor, I apologize. Thank you for the grammatical help, and I'll do better next time. Um, we will now start with Catherine Malloy. Ms. Malloy, uh, welcome, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Okay. My name is Catherine Malloy. I live at 608 Price Avenue, and I thank you for letting me speak. Um, I want to speak about an area where I live. Uh, we've all seen Durham growing and changing quickly, but some parts of it need to be preserved. Uh, I look at the area around Lakewood Shopping Center and West Chapel Hill Street. Uh, these areas are being preserved because they represent the real or bare bones of Durham's past. Another area needs preservation, and that is the historic Bevel Street area. Um, attention to this area would continue the progress that we're making from the new police headquarters. The uh, east wall of the headquarters faces Fayetteville Street. And if you would come on down Fayetteville Street, cross the train tracks, come past the new Bull City Apartments, uh, you'll get to the beginning of the historic Fayetteville Street area. So I'm asking the City Council to consider funds for a sign at the entrance to historic Fayetteville Street uh, the sign could be located near um, land that is near the exit of Fayetteville Street off of 147 South, uh, or there's also available space at the former ABC store on Fayetteville Street. Uh, there are other suitable places up and down the corridor. Um, there are already two new signs in the area. One is located across from Haytai Heritage Center, a law firm that has constructed a sign there. And the second new sign is um, where Central, North Carolina Central, has constructed one at the corner of Fayetteville and Dupree. Uh, a sign like this could be the beginning project or end project to preserve the area for cultural designation. Preserving Durham's past is important. The surrounding areas would also benefit from some extra attention and emphasis on the area, some positive attention, and also uh, focus on the need for the area to have an update. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Malloy. Ms. Hester, welcome. You have three minutes. Please give us your name and address. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Denise Hester, 3526 Abercrombie Drive in Durham. I am a member of the Durham Business and Professional Chain and the Fayetteville Street Planning Group, uh, two organizations who have a great interest in the development activities of our city. We request a $5 million allocation for engineering and construction of a streetscape for the Fayetteville Street Corridor. Streetscapes have been built for the other three corridors into downtown, some funded more than once, but Fayetteville Street, again, has been left out. The Fayetteville Street Corridor is too important to be left out. It's a major north-south transportation route to RTP, the airport, and I-40, and it's a feeder for local traffic. This historic corridor is the southern gateway into downtown for residents, businesses, students, and visitors. It is home to historic landmarks, the city's only African-American local and national historic districts, North Carolina Central University, 
and Hillside High School. It needs, inf its infrastructure needs should not continue to be overlooked. Infrastructure improvements would lift all boats, not just for one specific business person or institution, but for the stakeholders who helped build this corridor over the past 150 years uh, and who are currently still located here. Statements, one from one high tech source and one from a rural source, underscore how important it is in our state and city to support local businesses already here. Patrick Woody, president of the North Carolina Rural Center said, we've got to really work at building the ecosystem in this state for, for supporting existing businesses already here, emphasis on already here. And several real estate developers commenting on the incentives for the potential entry of Apple and Amazon to the triangle also expressed caution that we should not lose sight of support needed for our existing businesses. New businesses coming in are fine, but we should never lose sight of those who helped build our city to where it is today. From the high-tech triangle to the rural North Carolina, supporting stakeholders already present is critical to advancing the city's goal of shared economic prosperity. The resulting physical improvements would stimulate business development, create jobs, much needed jobs, to lift families out of poverty, reduce crime, and increase revenues for the city. And I don't know what municipality is not interested in more revenue. If the city really wants to create shared economic prosperity, now is the time to start sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Hester. Mr. Hester, welcome. You have three minutes. I hate to follow my wife. My name is Larry Hester. And I live at 3526 Abercrombie Drive in Durham. I am chair of the Durham Business and Professional Chain and member of the Fable Street Planning Group. My business is located in the Haytai District of the Fable Street Corridor. We have a vision for a safe, livable, sustainable, and affordable community that supports vibrant residential neighborhoods, thriving shopping districts, and a nationally acclaimed cultural district. Some say that you cannot stop market forces once they start moving. I disagree. I was there when downtown Durham was at its lowest point years ago. And the city of Durham decided to stop the market forces of decline by creating the environment for economic recovery. These efforts paid off for downtown. That same vision should also apply to the Fable Street Corridor. We request that $10 million be set aside in a fund to assist businesses and property owners with business incentives and development funds scale for neighborhood businesses and rehab fund for owners to improve their property and prevent Demolition. We've seen demolition in other places. Fable Street is home to over 100 African American businesses, more than anywhere else in the county or the city of Durham. 200 merchants and residents of the Carter worked for a year in 2005 to produce a plan for the improvement of this corridor. The city council's response was that it was too comprehensive and continued its investment in downtown and other areas of our city. An investment in infrastructure improvements and business development fund for existing businesses and residents already in the corridor can help mitigate gentrification, high unemployment, and the wealth disparity in this historic corridor and begin to position the Fable Street Corridor for economic recovery. We hope you hear us this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hester. Ms. Standard, you have three minutes. 
Good evening, my name is Diane Standard. I live at 1114 Lancaster Street, Durham, North Carolina. Um, here on behalf of the Human Relations Commission for the City of Durham, we just wanted to thank you for taking a great step forward in addressing our city's eviction crisis in this year's budget. As you know, over 900 people a month in Durham face eviction, and this is falling most hard on um, African American and Latino communities and low income people. We are pleased to see that $200,000 has been allocated to the eviction diversion program, which will increase the chances that tenants facing eviction will have access to legal representation. This investment will help ensure that people have a fighting chance of staying in their homes when faced with what in many ways has essentially become an eviction machine. We saw this machine at work in particular in the courtroom where we saw landlords were always represented but tenants most often were not. This is an important investment in the safety of our community, ensuring more people are able to benefit from the stability of staying in their homes, which helps reduce homelessness, contributes to students' success in schools, and reduces costs to current and future tenants. We hope this is just the first step of the city's commitment, and not just the council, but for all of us in the community. And, and more work remains to be done, but we did wanna say thank you for this item and the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stander. <clears throat> Max Davis. <clears throat> Mr. Davis, welcome. My name is Max Davis. I live at 1611 Merrick Street in Durham. And I work for the city of Durham. I'm here to talk about three important issues. One being the wage issue. We're asking that the merit raise has been shown to be bias toward workers in intensive uh, positions in the past, workers who do not get exceeds or increase associated with it. Historically, the higher wages have been management, giving money to management. We ask that that money be taken and be equal, that's equal to 3% and divide that amount to give the workers the flat, flat raise uh, and part-time workers. Also, we have an issue with understaffing our garbage trucks are grossly understaffed. We don't have enough trucks. The trucks are outdated. We're still driving equipment from 2004 and 2005. Um, we don't have enough trucks. The equipment is not in good repair. And some of our three-man trucks have two men working on them when there should be three, which is unsafe. Uh, the third and last issue would be the compensation study. We request to review the report as soon as it is done and meet with council and the manager on how to uh, implement it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, next, we have Sarah Vukalic. Vukalic, I'm not sure how to say it. Welcome, you have three Hi. minutes. Um, my name is Sarah Vukalic. I live at 710 Underwood Ave. Um, and I just wanted to um, also speak to the, the city budget. Um, I don't want to repeat anything that Max said, but I know every year our union pushes on this issue of seasonal, temporary, and part-time workers not getting $15 an hour. And I don't know why that continues to fall on deaf ears. Um, I'm a part-time city worker. Um, I work in parks and recreation, and I make like significantly less than $15 an hour. Um, and I, I don't know if there's an, maybe there's an idea that most of these workers are like, teenagers with summer jobs or, or something like that, and it's okay not to, not to have uh, a living wage, but that's, that's just not true. Most people I know who are working uh, part-time in my department are working part-time in city parks in Durham, and then also part-time in city parks in Chapel Hill or Cary or Raleigh, and it's basically you're working a full-time job, but you don't have benefits, you don't have job security, and it's a scheduling nightmare, and it's a commuting nightmare. So um, just wanted to be speaking on behalf of, uh, of those city workers um, and, uh, and, and pushing that issue. And I just also finally want to say that even though we, we didn't show up in white, but our, our union is, is absolutely in support of this resolution. Uh, in fact, uh, Sandra Makina, who's the wife of Jose Chicas, is, uh, is a member of our union as a state worker. Um, and yeah, we're, we're here in support of the resolution as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. 
Landis Maisnor. Mr. Maisnor, welcome. You have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you know my name. I live at 2822 Pickett Road, and I'm the board chair of Bike Durham, a coalition of volunteers working to improve affordable transportation in Durham. Uh, we are pleased to see that the proposed budget includes funding for bicycle and pedestrian facilities. Uh, this shows an understanding that we cannot reach our equity and sustainability goals of affordable housing and job growth without affordable transportation. Uh, if we fail to provide affordable transportation, those two goals suffer as well. Uh, as the population and density of Durham increases, safety becomes even more vital as people opt to use non-automotive transport. However, Know that decisions like Marine Road made by staff in this body to not explore safer options are a disappointment to hundreds of people who consistently express a desire for safer infrastructure. These funds and the budget support projects that are necessities, not luxuries. Protected bike lanes and complete sidewalks are proven tools that provide safety for vulnerable road users. They have demonstrated a 90% reduction in inju injuries and fatalities. These types of facilities, when part of a complete network, can increase biking and walking by more than 400%. Statistics numb the reality that we're talking about real people whose lives can be saved by better policy decisions. Carlos Rita Reyes comes to mind, a Durham dishwasher who biked to work every day for 13 years and was hit and killed by a car in uh, December of last year. Carlos represents the majority of bike commuters who do not own cars and rely on bikes to commute to their service jobs, usually riding more often and longer distances than sport cyclists. Similar arguments can be made for the importance of connected sidewalks and frequent crosswalks. For these reasons, protected bike lanes and connected sidewalks on streets with higher speeds and traffic volumes are standard best practices in peer cities across the country and the world. They are no longer luxuries, but a requirement for a city like Durham. The goal should be to build facilities that meet our commitment to Vision Zero and federal design standards. In the inevitable cases like Marine Road, where because of site factors or budget or timeline, there are trade-offs in safety. Council must know what stands in the way of industry best practices. Knowing something will cost more or take longer is not the same as knowing how much more or how much longer. We believe it is the role of this body to make policy decisions that weigh these trade-offs, but you cannot make them without complete information. This knowledge can enlighten whether there is a way to divert or rearrange funds to accommodate best practices and save lives. Thank you again for your time and your considering the necessity of full information and this funding especially so the best decisions with respect to resident safety can be made. We look forward to working more with you in the future on important issues. Thank you very much, Mr. Masonor. Is there anyone else who would like to be heard on this item? This is a public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing concerning our budget. Is there anyone else in the room who would like to be heard on this item? If not, are there, are there comments by council members at this point? Or questions for staff? Any comments by council members? Uh, before I close the public hearing, I want to thank everyone that spoke today. Um, and I want to assure you, uh, the, in the phrase of one of our eloquent speakers, your comments did not fall on dead, deaf ears. We are very concerned about all the issues that you raised. And, we will take all of them very seriously. And I want to just thank you all for being here uh, and, and making your voices heard. Thank you so much. If there are no further comments, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed. I want to thank those that were here in attendance for that item. Uh, we're now going to move. Mr. Mayor, for the, for the record, you might want to just confirm that uh, the council will consider the final adopting of the budget at the next council meeting on uh, June the 18th. Yes, thank you. Yes, we will be voting on the on the budget itself two weeks from tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ma thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, now we'll move to item two, resolution in support of the National Movement of Congregations of Faith. And uh, we have we have four speakers on this item. Uh, and as I call your name, I'm going to ask you to come over to the right. Uh, and uh, you will have three minutes to speak. The first speaker is Lee Mortimer. The second speaker is Chris Tiffany. The third speaker is Reverend Eric John C. I'm not sure. Couldn't quite read your handwriting, but I think you probably know who you are. Uh, and the final speaker is uh, Faisal Khan. And so if the four of you all could please come over here to the right. And uh, we will begin with you, 
Uh, Mr. Mortimer, and you will have three minutes. Welcome, and please give us your name and address. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Lee Mortimer, 4116 Livingstone Place, 30-year resident of Durham. I wish to speak in favor of Council Member Caballero's resolution to support immigrants currently facing deportation. My wife and I have done shifts at the UCC Church in Raleigh that provides sanctuary to one such immigrant. The current surge of immigrants includes many fleeing horrific criminal violence in their home countries. Those who have led their children away from that violence now face the prospect of their children being taken from them and turned over to an uncertain fate. We should be mindful of our country's role in shaping the social conditions in those countries. In the 1980s, I participated in, eff in efforts that supported popular movements to throw out brutal U.S.-supported dictatorships in Central America. Our government propped up some of the world's worst human rights violators in the name of opposing Marxist revolution. We can't know what might have happened if Marxists had come to power in Honduras, Guatemala, or El Salvador. What we do know is that the governments who received our lavish military support have supported have allowed those countries to become hell holes of violence, driving a flood of refugees to our southern border. Two years ago, I was able to make a first visit to Ireland and the city of Cork where my grandmother immigrated to America and eventually brought most of her family. All that my grandmother needed was to buy, was the money to buy a boat ticket. Many Americans, including those who complain so loudly about illegal er immigrants are here today only because their grandparents and great-grandparents enjoyed virtual, virtually unlimited entry into the United States. This resolution appropriately follows your recent unanimously approved policy statement rejecting militarized police training from governments such as Israel. Durham should continue standing up for human rights and reject practitioners of violent repression, especially when they receive support and comfort from our government and our tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mortimer. And we'll now hear from Chris Tiffany. Mr. Tiffany, please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Chris Tiffany, uh, PO Box 25331. I'm wearing white to support immigrants and First Amendment rights, including religious freedoms, and freedom of expression, including the right of the people to petition for redress of grievances, in other words, to complain, including the right to complain about, for example, violations of the right of the people, including pedestrians, to be secure against unwarranted search and seizure, like being face planted and told, we don't like Mexicans dating our women. When the Citizens Review Board was being designed, I strenuously objected to the exclusion of public input and review and to the intended name and insisted that it be called the Civilian Police Complaint Review Board, not citizen. The rights of the people to justice are not limited to just us citizens or to citizen gentry, but extend to all the people, including immigrants and various Indian nations and people in and near unposted target areas of whatever nationality or ethnicity, age, sex, race, color, or class. Thank you very much, Mr. Tiffany. And now we'll hear from Reverend Eric Johnson. That's right, Johnson. Johnson. My name Mayama Eric Johnson. I live at 2127 uh, Edwin Avenue here in Durham. I'm a Presbyterian minister. My wife and I, Libby, uh, recently moved here from East Tennessee. I worship and an active participant at the Church of Reconciliation in Chapel Hill, which is a sanctuary church. We support Rosa the Carmen uh, Cruz. But every Wednesday night, my wife and I and other community members here in Durham, we sit down for a meal with Jose Chicas, who is at the School of the Conversion here in Durham. He's in sanctuary. He's a, a colleague of mine in, in ministry. He's a minister of the gospel and he yearned to be reunited with his family here who live in uh, Raleigh. 
we see and we eat together with his wife Rosa, with his sons uh, Altska, Darwin, and Ezekiel. And it's a beauty to sit down and feast with them. And I'm here to speak words of gratitude for this resolution, and particularly to Javier uh, Councilman uh, Caballero for um, putting forth this resolution. I think, and I support the overture, I mean the overview of the reason why people are clogging the road for, for safety from Latin America. I've been there numerous times as well as four of my uh, five children. We are involved in a web of life and uh, th they would be grateful for this resolution because it would be a sign of hope to the tens and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of other people who are facing deportation. And I'm proud to be part of this community with the passage of this resolution because it provides a sense of liberation. It says something about what we are about and who we are. We are a welcoming community, we embrace people, and we will respectfully uh, honor their, their struggle and their hardship, and they will find refuge among us. So I bring you gratitude from Jose Chicas, and as I'm certain that Samuel uh, Bruno, his congregation, that support him in San Juan to offer his thanksgiving as well. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and others here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank Johnson. you very much, Reverend Johnson. And now we'll hear from Faisal Khan. Mr. Khan, welcome. You have three minutes. Please introduce yourself and state your address. Uh, Faisal Khan, Carolina Peace Center, 501 Jones Ferry Road in Carborough. Uh, Mr. Mayor and the council member, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, I didn't come to a prepared speech, but I just wanted to thank uh, uh, Ms. Javier Caballero and everybody else and the members to support this resolution. I think it's really important for a city like Durham and other cities in the state of North Carolina and across the country to show support to our immigrants and refugees who are being marginalized and directly targeted with uh, horrible Trump policies. And I thank the city of Durham for taking a stand and being on the side of justice, at least passing this uh, symbolic resolution that is extremely important. I, uh, been really touched by this gentleman who has been, who's taken a sanctuary at the Umstead Church Park uh, uh, for about six months now. I've uh, got to know him personally a little bit. An amazing gentleman. An amazing gentleman, an amazing artist. He's building these beautiful uh, bird houses that are just unbelievable. Um, has a member of a family, has one beautiful children, and it's really unacceptable how our government is treating these people. They would not be here, people from Nicaragua, from Honduras, from Guatemala, and even from Mexico would not be here if it wasn't for the United States' horrible, overt and covert policies of destabilizing these countries that are now facing unprecedented level of violence and gang violence and, and, and dire socioeconomic conditions. And that really has allowed these people to escape those countries to find a peaceful life in this country to make their lives, make their ends meet, and to have a peaceful life as a citizen of this country. So I ask also other members of the community to stand up and support these kind of resolutions in their own cities. Also, it's important that U.S. Congressman uh, Butterfield and Congressman David Price to present a private bill that has been uh, issued before to stop the deportation of Samuel and Jose so they may return home to their families immediately without any threat of deportation. I think it's really important that this is a symbolic gesture and a movement for all of us to join. That if it takes a village to raise a child, it's gonna take a city and a town to come together to protect these people. And it's incumbent upon us as people of our society, as a, uh, citizens of this nation, to stand up and support our brothers and sisters from immigrant and refugee communities. And I thank you for taking the stand. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now hear from Eliazar Posada. And while Mr. Posada is coming to the lectern, is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Is there anyone else?
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Te abrazamos in Durham. Estamos contigo. Eliezer. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Elizar Posada, uh, 1325 Juniper Street. Um, so I am the Community Engagement Advocacy Manager for El Centro Hispano. And I don't have anything prepared. Uh, as you saw, I just put my name uh, on the sheet. I wanted to take some time to acknowledge every single one of you for all the work that you are doing uh, to protect our communities. Um, in the past, Durham has always been an ally, and they'll continue to be. And we see uh, Durham as a place for all of us to come together and be one, be a community, uh, and more than that, be a family. Uh, so I want to thank not just Councilwoman Canviero, but the entire council uh, for all the work that you do. Um, and reiterate in some of the words that we already heard tonight. Uh, this is a fight that will continue. Um, we will be working not just on increasing sanctuary and redefining what sanctuary means, right, so that we can see all of us as a community, all of us as a family, but also to fight for the rights of every single person who is marginalized, not just our Latinx community, but anyone who needs our help, we are there to help. Uh, and again, thank you so much. I just wanted to come up today and thank you. Um, part of myself and on, on behalf of El Centro Hispano, thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Mis amigos, gracias por estar aquí esta noche para esta importante resolución. Estamos contigo. Can I hear a, I guess we have a motion on this item already. Is there any more discussion? If not, I'm going to ask the clerk to please open the vote. Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now move to item three, appointment of civilian police review board members, and we'll hear from Mr. Chris Tiffany. Mr. Tiffany, welcome. You have three minutes. Thank you. Um, Chief Davis responded to my suggestion that when cops use force, they should document the use of force by referring not to policy, like the fact that police are required to document, are required to document use of force against drivers, but not pedestrians to complaints, saying we cannot depend on cops to complain, and the complaints have to come from victims. I tried to tell her about Durham One Call Professional Complaint Handling. Our civilian review board? No, they're useless. I'll tell you about that later. The CPRB are amateurs who don't take don't complaints. But when I tried to tell her about Durham One Call, she said, I'd love to talk to you about this process later, okay? But when I tried to talk to her out in the lobby, saying I've been stopped hundreds of times, sometimes at gunpoint, she cut me off and said, yeah, I wonder why, and turned and walked away. After her latest quarterly report, after she said she'd meet with me, I followed her out into the lobby and said, you've said that before. Is it true this time? Thanks. And she said, right now. I said, okay. But she kept cutting me off and arguing when I tried to tell her when the, that when the CPRB had their first ever public forum here about complaint handling, one complaint was that a cop pulled a gun on their eight-year-old, and they described the runaround they got, unable to get anyone to take their complaint. And ironically, there was no audio and no transcript and no indication that a cop pulled a gun on an eight-year-old, nor that they could not get their complaint taken by anyone, including the CPRB, which also failed to document their complaint. When I went to one of the CPRB public meetings, I was told I could only speak for one minute. A police attorney said they don't want to document use of weapons because they, could, they would be swamped with paperwork. And the lawyer running the CPRB said, no wonder you get stopped. Look at what you're wearing toboggan, and a hoodie. And an elderly white woman, an English professor, said she'd never been stopped by the police, suggesting that you must have done something to get stopped by the police, and said that the way to improve the complaint form is to use Garamond font, at which point I slapped my head. Anyone in a position of possible oversight should listen 
to complaints without cutting people off or suggesting that they must be criminals, liars, or ignorant. Au contraire, complainants know m much that politicians are sycophants riding shotgun in the front seat of police cars with cops don't know. If you'd listen, y'all could even learn about undocumented use of force unknown to elderly white English professors. Thank you very much, Mr. Tiffany. Uh, yeah, Mr. Tiffany, you have your bottle of, of drink. Could you come get it? Thank you. I've been Woody and Eisenman. I've been uh, informed by the man, by the by the attorney that we actually did need an item uh, a, a, a motion on the last item. So we're going to first go ahead and vote here on item three. Need a motion uh, on this too. We need a motion on item three as well. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item three. Uh, Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. And now we'll go back to item two. Do we have a motion on item two? Move approval. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Thank you. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Sorry about that, council members. No worries. Uh, and now we'll move to item 20, uh, no, item 14. Proposed sale of property located at 700 Canal Street to Copernica Properties, LLC. Councilmember Freeman. Um, I apologize. I really am trying to figure out the process for this. Um, I, miss, I might have missed an update or a briefing or something, but I, this is the first that I heard of this in this. Okay. And so I was just trying to find some more information. I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? I might be confused. Could, could you just explain the item and how we got to this point? Yes. This is a uh, David, can you introduce give your yourself. Name and introduce yourself, please. Excuse me, David Fleischer, General Services Department. Uh, this was a piece of surplus city real estate, and we had an unsolicited offer come from the adjacent property owner uh, for sale of this parcel. We determined, staff determined, that uh, there was no recommendation by any city department that would re retain this property. We also determined that the offer was in keeping with fair market value, and we moved to recommend the sale of this surplus, as surplus property to council. Could you also say something about the property itself, its shape, its size, and so forth? I could. The adjacent property owner owns a developable, excuse me, a developable piece of property. This property is shaped as a wedge. There is no portion of this property that is buildable. Uh, the widest portion of the wedge will be uh, retained by the city or reserved by the city as a sanitary sewer easement, and the smaller part of the wedge is wholly within the non-buildable uh, area uh, required adjacent to a creek. Is the area that would be retained wide enough for a bike lane or a walkway so that you could have access to the East End Park? The easement is adjacent to a street and is accessible off the street on both corners of this uh, of the uh, developer's adjacent property and our property. There's sidewalk there? There, I'm not certain if there's sidewalk. I don't believe there is sidewalk yeah, along Canal Street. I just, I just wanted to raise the concern that this piece of property, recognizing that we're talking parks and trails and all the conversation around how much we're gonna spend, if we're giving away parts of property or selling off pieces of property that could be used as a piece of a trail or part way of a, of a greenway, I mean access to a greenway, um, there should be more conversation about it before it gets this far, because I hadn't heard anything, I'm sorry. Any other, any just, other? just for the record, I'm sorry, Ms. Mary, confirm you, this was reviewed by General Services Department and the Parks and Recreation Department for any potential utilization for access to trails or trail purposes? Yes, Mr. Manager, it was. And additionally, of course, the Transportation Department Transportation. Uh, did not ask for any kind of reservation of anything adjacent to the street. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more comments or questions? All righty. Can I hear a motion on the item? Move the item. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, this is item 14, proposed sale of property located at 700 Canal Street to Copernica Properties, LLC. Any more discussion? If not, Madam Clerk, can you please open the vote? Close the vote. Uh, 
Motion passes 6-1 with Councilmember Freeman voting no. Thank you very much. Now we'll move to item 21, fiscal year 2018-19 amendment to contract for city services and programs for the downtown Durham Municipal Service District. Councilmember Freeman, I, I think you had questions on this one. Um, mainly around the description of services and recognizing that it is in, I think, on page two of the Exhibit A. And I, I just, it just raises flags for me anytime we talk about tracking unusual activity and then recognizing that it's noted that it'll be electronically tracked. I, I wanted to know if the folks who are providing this service have actually had any professional development around race equity. Okay, so to clarify, the question is, as it relates to Could the you community safe yourself, service, please, Summer? I'm sorry, good evening, I apologize. Summer Austin, Office of Economic and Workforce Development. And so just to make sure I understand the question, as it relates to the clean and safe services provided by the ambassadors, the question is, how have the ambassadors been trained as it relates to this particular item? Yes. Okay. If it's okay with you, the president of Downtown Durham Incorporated is here. I'll let her speak to that specifically. But my understanding is, is that the ambassadors receive a broad survey of training in a lot of different areas as part of the services that they provide. I doubt that training of this particular type was singled out. It was probably a continuum of things that they've been trained on over time. And I just wanna share, like it's specific to the fact that um, racism and internalized oppression work hand in hand. If you don't recognize what you're doing to, con to be complicit in the system, you'll continue to operate in the same way, shape and fashion, and that's all. Okay. Is there, is there something that you would like for us to provide as it pertains to the specificity of the training or would, that would you like for us to just acknowledge your concern? Both. I would like to, to have it acknowledged and then also to know exactly what it is that the training um, looks like on the act on the side of race equity or where it is. Okay. If it's permissible to you, we will provide that to you subsequent to the meeting. That's fine. Thank you. And then there was also a second one. Um, and this was, this is more of a, of a question to, to um, our city manager, I'm sorry. I know that um, public urination is an issue, uh, as it is a city. Is there any conversation around any public restrooms? I, I just had a tour and I saw a really cool one in Atlanta and I'm just trying to make sure that I... Are you talking about in the downtown area? Yes. I might ask Ms. Thompson if she uh, talk about that a bit. I know that does come up from time to time. Cole Thompson, President and CEO of Downtown Durham, Inc. Uh, and you're asking if there are any public restrooms in the downtown area. Um, <coughs> there are, to some degree. Uh, we are aware of the public urination issue. Um, our ambassadors are, are aware and property owners uh, will let us know about that. Uh, we are having conversations as much as we can. Um, but to say specifically, is there something that has been identified at this time, I, I do not know. I could do a little bit of research and get back with you at a later date. And the reason I bring it, I know it was pretty expensive for the city of Atlanta to put, install just the one unit. And so I don't know what our plan looks like, but I would like to know that we're working towards some, some type of facility so that folks don't necessarily, they're not dinged for not having access to some place to go to the restroom. No, that is something we can certainly look into going into the next fiscal year. Especially for folks who actually live in, like on the streets. Yes, so. yes. No, we, we could look into that and have conversations with the city on recommendations. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions or comments? Just one additional comment to say that I really appreciate the change of language from, um, I, I want to say, well, it, changing the language to underutilize, to recognize that the business, business not just small businesses, but the, the historically underutilized businesses is really helpful. Thank you. That is a, along the race equity lines. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Do I hear a motion on item 21? Move to amend. Second. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Excuse me, could you clarify, Mr. Councilman Middleton, did you say amend or amend the contract? Is that not the proper language? 
Just uh, approve. Move, move to approve the item. To approve. Move to approve the amendment, I guess what we would he, what say. What he say? Got <laughs> it. Okay. Thank you. So why we have lawyers, right? Okay. <laughs> Madam Clerk, open the vote. Close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Is there any other ma matter to come before this body? If not, we are adjourned at 758. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Painful.